So I think what's going on here is because we are using the inverted commas here to create to create this to change this into a string instead of just having it as text. But the problem is that even the on click listener uses uh, these double quotes here and outside there. So if you can imagine this in JavaScript terms, so let's imagine this is loaded on the page. What will happen is that it's going to have a number here, which is that number, and then it's going to have the text enabled in, in our case, and then it's going to have these inverted commas there. Now the problem is this inverted comma starts here and then it means it's going to close there. So what's happening is that it's expecting an expression, but it's getting something else because this function ends there. So as far as it is concerned, this is a different attribute here. So we are in a bit of a predicament here because I can't use single quotes here because I'm using the single quotes to echo out this. And I can't use double quotes here because I'm using the double quotes for that. So this is a bit of a pickle, but we can easily solve it by assigning these values to, uh, if we can assign these values to another item outside of this. So what I would do is I'm just going to cut this out like so, so that we have two dots there. And then I'll just paste in a, uh, let me remove this one double quote there. I'm just going to create a, uh, a variable i'm going to name it args short for arguments because these are function arguments and let's just create it here so i'm going to say args like so is equal to and then we'll give it that so that that way we can do whatever we want here use whatever quotes we want and because it's just going to be added here so ideally we want single quotes in here because we have double quotes outside here so I am going to do exactly that here. I will do this. So I will assign the number there, quite all right, but this should be a string also. So let me remove these single quotes and put double quotes here like that. So this single quote represents the text in here. So I will do this again and put that single quote like that. Okay, I think that should solve our problem. So let me come back to here and refresh. And let's try and click now. Okay, so we've gotten some uh, Ajax here, some uh, JSON back here, so which means things probably worked. So let's come back here and do a refresh. And as you can see, there's a one there, which is good. We've disabled this one successfully. But then what I want is when I click now, I should be able to enable it again. So let me click again. So I get some JSON data. Let's come back here and check what's happening. Oh, and it's not changing. So let's just uh, confirm that. Let me inspect the element just to see what's going on. So it's writing enabled, even though now it's disabled. So which is not true. So it's supposed to change from there to enable. Oh. Like I mentioned earlier, the problem here is that we are not refreshing the table. So which means it's permanently on enabled. That's why it's not changing there. So this should change to disabled. So in order to do that, I can refresh the page here. And now I see disabled, which is good. And we might also want to change the color of that button so that we, we can easily tell when things are disabled. And here, Let's see one second. What I can do is put an if statement here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So in here we have, uh, where is this? This is a uh, span, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see if I change, I add a, um, a class button warning, something like this. Let's see what that does. Okay, so it doesn't uh, change anything. Okay, so what I want is to add a class name here so, the, so that this span 
can um, so that the span can change to a different color so right here i can do this i can say pointer let me add uh, semicolon let me add a background color here and we're just going to put black refresh and there we go so these guys are black now so now let me inspect element and then let's change this to something more reasonable and i like the color at the top here to keep things uniform so i'll do that eh, it's not very clear but that is the general idea so let's darken it a little bit like that disabled click there copy so I want this to be the color for when something is disabled. So here I can easily just uh, put some PHP there. So I will say color is equal to, let's step out of the string and back again. And here I will say color. Uh -huh. So let's come back here. So what I want to do is first of all, set color I will copy this because this is exactly the condition that I want but then I will assign this to color so say color is equal to so disabled here that's my color right there I'll paste it there enabled I'll just leave it like so okay so let's try and refresh that oops oh so it's not actually changing here background color okay so let me for a second here let me let me remove this click there just change the name of the background color so that it has no effect and then i want to inspect the element and let's make sure we have that color so copy that color the blue color so that we can explicitly put it there so i'll change the background color here and then I will put that color there so that we have either this or that. So let's refresh. Okay, so enabled, disabled. So this color isn't changing at all. Let me come here and see what is going on. Oh, I see. Now, because here we are actually changing this, right? We are changing this here. It would be a good idea to start with this so that before we alter what's inside here, because I need to know whether this is a zero or a one. But the problem is here, we're actually assigning a new value of either disabled or enabled, which means it will always be true. So let me move this one step up like, th like that so that I start with this. Then even if I change it here, it won't make a difference. So I think that was the issue. So let me refresh and there we go. So we have that and that. Okay, so let's disable. Now this time I want to disable something else, but I want it to refresh once I do that. So let me come back here. Luckily, there's a way to do that easily. If we go back to our Ajax, remember that uh, here, when we're adding a category, we're actually refreshing things afterwards so here we create a category and then what do we do we actually make a table okay so we're saying the data is equal to category make table so where are we declaring category here let me see that so we are doing it right there now since we're going to be using this uh, model on all of these so i will move it up here where we are declaring the db right there so that we can use it anywhere down here instead of being in this if statement so what i can do now is to do exactly this now cuts is equal to category get all so good let's do that copy that come to where is this disable row enable disable so right here we will put it there uh -huh. 
like that. Okay, so we get the rows and then we assign data to that. So let me remove this empty data here. Okay, good. So now once we are done with this, uh, we, we will need to reload it when it comes back. So let me come back here for a second. I don't need uh, this result here. Great. And this is exactly what we are doing here. So data object object data. So let me copy that. And where is uh, handle result? Let's delete raw. So let's do a duplicate here. And then make sure I put that else there. So this one is disable row. So whatever data we return, we are going to set it to the table body. Okay, so there we go. Let's refresh and let's click there. And you see disabled, disabled, enabled, disabled, enabled. Isn't that fun? Okay, so which means if we come to our database and refresh, we're going to see that some of the numbers are ones, some of them are zeros. Pretty good. So we're going to use the same method to delete a category here. So I will see you in the next video where we do that.